I think I'm talking about getting started with building a pantry, building up your reserves, whatever you want to call it. So if you look online, there are lots and lots and lots of lists and calculators to help you decide what and how much to store. And of course that's wonderful, someone put a lot of work into that, but there's one area where those fall short, and that is that they don't know you. So how could I tell you what to store if I don't know what you eat? How could I store you, tell you how much to store if I don't know your appetite? Um, I don't know your metabolism. I don't know your sensitivities, your allergies. So our family does not have any food allergies. Sensitivities are basically just, you know, dyes, sugar, MSG, those types of things. So we don't have a very limited diet. And we are a family composed of 10 big eaters. So that is who I am storing food for, and your situation will certainly be different. Um, when you're starting out, you're probably not working with a full to overflowing pantry. If you were, you wouldn't need to build a pantry, and you're probably not working with an unlimited bank account either. So while it would be nice to just go shopping and buy, you know, six months worth of food and be done, it's not realistic. Um, it's going to take time to build a pantry that you feel like is full, you know, it has everything that you need, and even then, you're going to continue to eat that food, and so there's never going to be a done for a pantry. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about what to store. So the number, number one rule, in my opinion, is to store what you eat and eat what you store. Um, if every calculator that you find online tells you to store 100 pounds of wheat berries, but you don't have a grain grinder and you've never cooked with wheat berries, you're wasting your time, you're wasting energy, you're wasting money, and you're wasting space if you decide to purchase that item anyway. You need to know what you eat. Take a look at what you have on hand right now. Okay, you probably have some pantry staples already in your home. So start making a list of those things that you already have. If you have flour, sugar, brown sugar, cocoa, baking soda, baking powder, um, powdered sugar, cornstarch, write those things down. Don't worry about writing down amounts. Just write down your own custom pantry stocking list. Um, think about fats. You might have shortening, olive oil, canola oil, um, butter, coconut oil, there's a lot of different things, and fat is something that people usually underestimate when it comes to how much that they store. Um, what about dry goods? So that would be like your oats, rice, pasta, dried beans. Um, write down the types. Do you use regular oats or quick oats? You don't want to buy quick oats if you're never going to use them, no matter what the price is. Um, then you're going to think about spices and seasonings. What do your favorite recipes call for? You're going to want lots of salt and pepper. And what about condiments? So soy sauce, maple syrup, honey, ketchup, Worcestershire, barbecue, hot sauce, mustard, salad dressing, peanut butter, jelly. Don't forget about yeast if you're going to want to be able to bake breads. Um, of course, yeast stores well in the freezer. You don't have to use it all really quickly if you want to buy it in bulk. Um, they'll probably be, well at that point then you want to think about things that make up your meals. So the things you don't necessarily have on hand all the time in a long term pantry, you know, the things that are pretty much always there like your potatoes and meat and vegetables and fruits and eggs and cheese and, you know, cream cheese and sour cream, all those things. So as you compile this list of all the things that you eat, it is going to look overwhelming. It's going to look huge. My list is on my phone and it is like four pages long. It's a lot of stuff. Um, we all tend to consume more variety than we think we do. So it takes time to get to the point where your food storage is fully stocked. Um, and then of course you also have to consider household items. Like I mentioned in the last video, toilet paper, paper towels, um, saran wrap, aluminum foil, Ziploc bags, soap, shampoo, dish soap, laundry detergent, SOS pads, shaving supplies, feminine hygiene products, 
that is an important one. Um, Q-tips, cotton balls, peroxide, alcohol, bandages, all of those things for your minor first aid. Um, pain relief and allergy medications, cleaners, hairspray, cough drops. There's so many things. And then don't forget it too about the things that just make life nice. Coffee and chocolate work wonders. Um, you can look back at your past receipts, your grocery orders, see if you bought things that you've forgotten about. Now this list will evolve over time. There's things on my list that we don't eat anymore and there's things that I probably need to add to it. Um, there's still diapers on my list and we don't have any children in diapers anymore. Um, so it's a constantly evolving thing. It's not a one and done thing. Um, I want to reiterate we are not prepping. We're simply being prepared and there is a difference there. We're creating a buffer between our family and the inevitable hard times that affect every one of us. So my list, my list would not include a lot of emergency food, the things that you think of for the end of the world. I'm not storing like 200 pounds of rice and beans. I'm not storing a lot of freeze dried foods, meats especially. I don't feel like we need to store um, a ton of ramen noodles, not really storing a ton for my list. But I do think that everyone should have some things on hand. Um, beans and rice, I do store. They're something that we eat on a regular basis and they are great at helping to stretch meals if there's um, a financial hardship. There's also um, canned soups are great, just something to heat and warm for times like when everyone's sick or when there's just a really busy day and you just need to get people fed and in bed. <laughs> and, um, and what about things like if your power goes out? Do you have something that you can eat? Do you have like maybe an electric kettle where you could boil water and you could do like cup of soup or oatmeal packets or something like that? Water is something that we need to think about because we don't have a way to access clean drinking water in the event that we don't have power. We do have a river on one side of our mountain and a creek on the other, but that would require a lot of filtering and boiling and things like that to make it potable. So, um, but we don't have to worry about an alternate heat source. Our stove is very old. It does not have any kind of electricity running to it. It's a gas stove with a manual pilot and we also have a wood stove, so we can cook over that if necessary. And if all else fails, you know, we could go outside and use a camp stove. We could start a campfire. We could use a grill. Those things aren't a concern for us, but water is something that we need to probably do better at. So once you have this enormous, overwhelming list, it's time to start looking at quantities. So how long do you want to prepare for? Um, if you're trying to follow sales to stock up on things, they used to say that sales run in a three month cycle. So if you had three months worth of items by the time you ran out, the item would be back on sale. I'm not sure if that's really um, applicable at this point. Sales have been kind of sporadic. But I do think that three to six months worth of food is a great um, middle line as far as what you're storing, how much you're storing. Three months should be a fairly reasonable goal um, to start with. So um, you're not going to just go shopping and buy three months worth of food. That would be crazy. It would be, um, even for a small family, it would be really, really expensive and a lot of stuff to deal with at one time. And So how much should you buy? Well, if you're looking back at past shopping trips and grocery orders, that can help you when thinking this through. Um, I like to, every once in a while, maybe twice a year or something, spend two weeks and write down everything that we use. So, if we have pancakes and we butter the griddle, I write down how many tablespoons of butter we used how much syrup, maybe have, you know, a quarter of a bottle or whatever. Um, and just try to keep track of what we're actually 
using how much our family actually needs so that I can make sure that I'm storing reasonable amounts. Um, so you can kind of be generic. You can say, like for our family, I know that we consume three to five pounds of meat per day. And so I can multiply that out to figure out how much we need. Um, like if you know that you have Taco Tuesday, every Tuesday, excuse me, then you probably know what it takes to prepare that meal. How much meat, how many beans, um, how many tortillas, all those things. And you can figure that out and just multiply it out. Um, so whenever I'm writing down, though, what we consume, I do not differentiate between, like, chicken breasts and ground beef. It's all just meat. I don't differentiate between corn and green beans. It's all just vegetables. Um, so that is where you can start to get a feel for how much you need. Um, I can decide then at that point what kind of meat I want to buy whenever I go to the grocery store and see what's on sale, markdowns, that type of thing. Um, you may want to differentiate whenever you're showing what you are eating between like fresh fruits and vegetables and preserved fruits and vegetables, canned, frozen, that kind of thing. Um, so after all that working, and figuring it's time to shop and that's where I'm going to pick up in my next video thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe and I will see you soon